Hello everybody, it's your boy Vari here. Uh, so, um, exciting things, big news. I'm fucking really excited about this stuff. So, um, <clears throat> not sure if many of you have heard, I'm, I've been telling a whole bunch of people because it's really exciting for me. Um, anywho, I'll start from the beginning. Uh, last month, Christmas, uh, my sister in law candace got me a pink oyster mushroom grow kit and so i had already been kind of like sort of interested in mushrooms but had never never had enough motivation to like actually get into like buying the stuff to start cultivating my own um, it always just been like one of those things that you talk about, like, Ooh, yeah, like that would be cool. Or like the infamous, like I'm gonna thing, like I'm gonna do this or I'm gonna do that, or we should do this type dealio. Um, and so that was one of those things. Um, and so, uh, she got me the blue oyster grow kit, grew that and it fucking just like sparked something in me. So, um, I decided to make a huge change, several huge changes, uh, in, uh, like a whole bunch of different areas. Um, and so in doing that, um, it has, uh, brought me to the point that I am now, um, which is I've invested into what I want to do. Um, this thing has kind of turned into like one of my passions. Everything that I do, everything that I've started doing since I've started has been super duper fun, like super exciting. Like I've been really excited about it uh, every step of the way, even like the couple times that I failed at stuff. Like I've had I've had to redo my grain once already because I fucked up and then I had uh, had an incident with my agar plates and filling those and because I fucked up and then I had to then I tried to put them in the microwave to like make them solidify a little bit more and then <clears throat> that just made a big mess in the microwave and then, <laughs> so it was like all these things but even through like all the shitty stuff um you know like it's been really fun like even through the failing um and so uh long story short um this is the beginning of my journey to becoming a gourmet mushroom farmer uh, your boy is going to be a farmer for sure, growing gourmet, not just gourmet, but also medicinal mushrooms, medicinal, uh, in the research that I've been doing, I've been finding that like a lot of these mushrooms are like packed with nutrients or packed with stuff that we don't get out of other food and they have healing abilities, healing properties to heal stuff like, uh, you know, inflammation and like Alzheimer's and like certain types of cancer and uh diabetes and shit like that so it's like the potential for mushroom medicine is huge the potential to use mushroom medicine to um change people's lives and like increase their daily quality of life huge the potential to provide a really fun, awesome experience for not just me, but like my kids and like be able to, you know, in the springtime, like they can help and like we can like harvest all the mushrooms and like go to different farmers markets and shit like that is fucking cool in itself. Like it, it's going to create so many different opportunities, not just for me and like my personal shit, but also for everyone around me to grow in ways that we wouldn't have necessarily thought we would have before or maybe not have uh maybe not have looked at before as like a avenue for growth anyways so um <clears throat> uh for this first run this is so oh yeah so this is what i want to do i want to show you what i've got so far which is all right so i went ahead and built myself a still air box uh, it's not in use at the moment because i'm not doing anything but uh, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, a couple holes in there, um, sanding those down so they're nice and smooth. And it's basically so when like I'm pouring my agar plates, which are these things here, 
um, when I'm pouring my agar plates, uh, there is no, there's less uh, chance of contamination from like uh, contaminants that are floating in the air. Um, ideally, uh, once I start getting um, getting some flushes and get an idea of like where my customer base is going to be coming from and all that stuff. Once I start making some money from this stuff, because I, I have all the supplies I need, I invested in all the supplies. I got my tent here, which I'll be turning into a Martha, all the stuff that I need <coughs> to uh, set it up there, as well as I got some stuff out in the garage, <coughs> which is um, going to be the humidifier fogger thing that I'm building, the little fogger tent dealio. So um, it was a little bit of money, yeah, to get started. But, it, you know, it wasn't actually necessary to spend as much as I did and get all this stuff. Like, you don't need all this stuff to start. But I did want to, um, you know, kind of like with every venture that I get into, I go all in uh, <laughs> with the stuff that I do. Um, so, um, this first round, uh, what I think, what my plan is um, so far right now is to... It is January 22nd right now. My plan is by May to have a couple um, grows under my belt, um, a couple harvests, and uh, kind of dial in, um, dial in my Martha. So it's, you know, kind of runs on its own, has perfect fruiting conditions, um, and then kind of figure out you know, my method for agar until I can uh, get a luminaire flow hood. And then, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, so I want to make sure that I'm able, I have the ability to grow these mushrooms, grow them good, healthy, and then figure out, um, you know, a schedule, you know, so like every week I have this that I'm harvesting and then this and then this and then in the next week this is going to be ready type stuff you know what I mean um once I start getting clientele I can start actually growing uh shrooms growing their growing their shrooms to order basically so if they need so many pounds per week I can actually have that I can set that up where I have so many blocks sitting in there fruiting you know, ready to go and I'm pulling, I have so many things colonizing and so on and so forth, which is uh, kind of the, the end game is to kind of get to that point where I have a good clientele base. I'm growing, uh, you know, perhaps maybe I have the, which is this thing, this grow, which once, so once I get done, there'll be holes over here, there'll be holes over here, or there'll be a hole here uh for like the exhaust thing there'll be a tub here with like water in it with um like uh, this fogger thing so this fogger thing uh is gonna create <clears throat> fog which will blow in here which will help create the humidity um to create the good fruiting temps for for them once they get to that stage so um what i'm gonna start with is uh yellow reishi blue oyster lion's mane shiitake um and then antler reishi um these ones look really cool i'm kind of excited about these ones um but yeah so wood loving uh wood loving mushrooms um the lion's mane and the oysters and i think the shiitakes i think maybe all of them i have to really do some more research on which ones before I get started. I, I do have some um, substrate for the lion's mane already. This one I do know. Um, and then these ones, I just, I need to do more research before um, I get those. I might have to make separate environments for them. I don't know. So we'll see. Um, but that's what I'll be getting started with. And... Uh, yeah, so yeah, that's it. Um, the process is really cool. <clears throat> so I started from scratch doing all of my own stuff. Uh, so I went and got a pressure cooker. Basically, uh, what I did is I took this bird seed. 
and then I put it in one of these buckets and then I put some water in it and then I rinsed it out a bunch um, so I got to fill it up and then like the bird seed and like the cracked hulls and stuff would like float to the top and I scooped those off and put them in a different bucket and then I continued to do the same thing I'd fill it up and then kind of pour it pour all the water off and fill it up again until it was clear and then once it was clear uh, I added in some coffee and some gypsum and then let it sit overnight. Well, actually, I let it sit for like a day, like 24 hours. Uh, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. Honestly, just walking on its two hind legs. Oh, that's cool. Right on. Good kitty. <laughs> so, um, yep, I filled it with water until it was clear, threw in the coffee and the gypsum, and then uh, let it sit for about 24 to... 48 hours to be honest that's I let it sit a little bit longer because I couldn't get my pressure cooker um before then I had a little tiny one but it wasn't it was one of those electric ones and I guess those electric ones they get up to 15 psi but they don't their running temperature is not or their running pressure is not it's about it's like 11.5 or something psi so it doesn't actually hold the 15 that you need for the sterilization process <clears throat> but basically what I did is uh after they were done i took them and i spread them out in a big bin kind of like this one but it was way bigger <clears throat> and then uh spread them out and um so they could dry out and then once they were not like fully dry but like the moisture didn't appear on a paper towel after i threw some in there after a couple minutes <clears throat> then i threw them in these jars with these caps uh, this is, I just used a, um, a hole puncher and I punched a hole in this cap and then these are uh, filters so the gas exchange can happen. And what's really cool is these things are, <clears throat> so I bought these things which are like super duper fucking awesome. So these are self-sealing injection ports. So basically, you can take you can take it and uh, punch a hole in the top of a can or a top of a top like I did on the other one, and then you just stick that so the hole is in the middle, and then you can use it to inoculate your jars. <clears throat> so instead of just having this one, because I'm gonna be using these ones for a grain to grain or agar to grain chance transfer, so agar, so the agar once these fully colonate will go. A little piece will go into here and I'll shake it up and then once these fully colonize they will be going into their uh, <clears throat> substrate so um, yeah really exciting stuff man um, so yeah there's like so many different types of mushrooms and so many different type types of uh, environments that they <clears throat> um, and so like I think there's like uh, one of the mushroom types I was just looking at last night has like 600 different species, just like with six different, 600 different species, like different types within like that genome or like mushroom species, if that makes sense. Different, different subspecies within that species of mushrooms is what I mean. Um, so... Yeah, there's just like so much. And then there's so much that's like unknown about like a lot of these. A lot of these mushrooms have not been like deeply researched. And so there might be some stuff that we find later down the road that, uh, you know, might just be, you know, um, groundbreaking in health sciences or whatever. Um, so what would be cool ultimately would be to get to the point where I have like my own facility. I got big ass things where like I'm growing my own, uh, like fucking, I got a whole thing full of like pink oysters and a whole thing full of reishi, a whole thing full of lion's mane. And then on this side of the building, I got all medicinals that we use where we take that and like ground it up into pills for people or like use extraction techniques to like pull out the compounds that are like super health beneficial or whatever. And then on the other side of the building, I got a team of scientists who are doing the research on the different types of mushrooms. Um, the morel mushroom, which is one that is native here to Minnesota, I believe that I, 
I read on the site last night that it said it was one of the most uh, <clears throat> un, it was one of the most researched, yes, yet least understood mushrooms is the morale. So it's like things like that. I looked at the process to grow those things. It's a process. But if you do want to go pick them in the wild, one thing that I did learn was that the temperature change from like 39 degrees to 70 degrees, 70 degrees is what sparks their, um, their fruiting. So if you're going to go look for them in the wild, once it, once you like the temperature goes from like about, I'd say like 40 degrees and then it like jumps up past like 60, 60, 65 to 70, I'd say those things are going to start fruiting. And then like within like a week to two weeks after that, probably two weeks after that, I think it was, um, you should start seeing some fruits uh, growing. So that would be like the perfect time to go out and then start hunting for them if you are a morale hunt hunter, mushroom hunter. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So with that being said, uh, I am inviting all of you who are watching this video to go ahead and go and follow my Facebook page black cat mycology and my youtube page black cat mycology where i will be shooting videos of my mushroom growing journey i will be documenting all of it um so you guys can see kind of like everything that i do i'll also be doing uh kind of educational videos if you want to call them that um as i go along with the different techniques that I'm using as I'm using them so I can show you guys what I'm doing. If anyone else has an interest in uh, mycology at all or growing their own mushrooms. So with that being said, I love you guys and I will see you in the next video, baby. Uh, Black Cat Mycology. Uh, peace.